This is the absolute worst mouthpiece I've ever played in my life. Alright, so this is part two of the Russo JDX. I made some modifications. I'm going to play what it sounds like now, and then I'll show you what I did in order to fix this mouthpiece. Alright, let's get to it. times better it was such a simple easy fix also so I figured I would just experiment and now this thing plays like an absolute champ and I've already gotten some comments from some viewers that they wish they had watched my video first before they spent their money so hopefully if you have this kind of problem that I had and not some serious serious manufacturing defect then you can easily easily fix not just this mouthpiece but any hard rubber or even metal mouthpiece that you have that may have what is essentially a severely uneven table and uneven rails and that's basically what the problem with this mouthpiece was all right so let me show you what i did okay so over here i have some 400 grit sandpaper you can see that there's some scratches that are on there that I use to fix this mouthpiece. And right next to it, I have some 1000 grit sandpaper. Um, these are the only things that I use in order to fix this mouthpiece. So I think both of these together cost me right around like five bucks. Or I don't even really remember, but it's a super easy fix. So let me show you the technique that I used when sanding down the table and the rails for this mouthpiece all right so you can see I've taken this out of the pack and I'm using this table which is pretty flat it's not like as flat as you should probably uh, use for a table but I just I didn't really care and I was experimenting anyway so if you do this you probably want to use a more flat surface notice also I just use all these other pieces of sandpaper under it uh, this is the method that I use and it worked. I'm sure that there's a much more efficient way to do it, but this is how I did it. So this is the 400, starting with the 400. I'm not gonna actually do this now because I already did it, but I'm just gonna show you what I did. Just starting from this position up to the top, I just brought it back once, twice, and a third time, and then I checked this table. And when I did that, I noticed there were these big scratches all over in random places which was an immediate sign that this table was not flat and I also assumed that the rails were pretty uneven also so I did that again one two three just for the length of the sandpaper itself you can see it's still got those marks there and then I checked it again and then it was pretty smooth so I prefer to do this in like three stroke motions and after I did it the second time, then I noticed, wow, this thing is so much better now than what it was when it came to me in the mail. Also, when you do this, you are going to get a very, very pungent burnt rubber smell. So I washed it off, cleaned it out, and then I moved to the 1000, took it out same kind of deal 
I use the entire stack as a pad on this relatively flat surface and as you can see there's some marks here and I did the same thing one two three checked it it was a lot smoother I did it one more time one two three and I didn't use that much pressure I was only trying to use the amount of pressure just to get the mouthpiece to have the minimum amount come off and flatten every time I did that so that's one two three one two three with the 400 and then one two three one two three with the 1000 grit after that again you get that horrible burnt rubber smell I washed it off and then I just got some regular like school paper that you get like notebook paper something like this on a pad of paper and then just went over it more aggressively on that super flat um, super smooth surface like that and this mouthpiece was good to go so another thing I want to show you uh, with the technique that I was doing when I would take it and slide it back like this I would just raise it up just a tiny little bit just to get some of these this lower part of the rails here because I suspected that they were uneven also I did that with every stroke that I did the whole process takes less than five minutes and what was the most horrible unplayable mouthpiece that I had in my fleet is now actually believe it or not one of my favorites so before I conclude I also did one other thing because I noticed that the actual quality of the sound wasn't really that good so I switched over to a much more dark read I switched over to these Van Dorn V12s I started with the Van Dorn blue box but I figured you know what I see where this sound is leading me so I switched over to something that's a little darker and now this thing sounds like a champ listen to this and judge for yourself so hopefully I hope that if you had this kind of issue then something this easy can help you to fix it and that way you don't wind up having to pay half the price of the mouthpiece getting somebody to fix it or sending it back and getting another one that's in the same condition or just abandoning the whole project all together so uh, that's all I got for you let's get to some playing <laughs>